Okay, folks, so now what we're going to look at is how to graph polynomials. We talked a little bit about in behavior, but I skipped over what do you do in the middle. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at what you do in the middle. We're going to put all the pieces together. So I have a function here, x squared minus 5x minus 6. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the in behavior. What does this graph do over on the left end? What does this graph do over on the right end? And then we're going to look at what does this graph do in the middle. So first the left end. I take the limit as x goes toward negative infinity of the equation. x squared minus 5x minus 6. Now again, only worry about the largest power. You can ignore the others. So I have the limit of negative infinity as x goes to negative infinity of x squared. Now that's negative squared. Negative times a negative is a positive. So our limit here is infinity. That's telling me as I follow this graph to the right, it goes upward. As I go to the right, it goes up um, to the left. It goes upward. Now looking over on this side, I want to look at the right end behavior. So I take the limit as x goes towards positive infinity of x squared minus 5x minus 6. Again, I can ignore those. So I just need x squared as x goes toward infinity. And so that's a positive squared, gives me infinity. So that's telling me as I go to the right, this graph goes upward. So I now know whatever is going on in this graph, I know that on the right it's heading upward, and I know that on the left it's heading upward. And now what I need to do is figure out what's going on in the middle. So how do we figure out the middle? Well, let me go ahead and erase this, make a little bit of space. To figure out what's going on in the middle, we're going to look for two things in particular. And there's a third thing to look for, but we'll talk about that later. First two things you want to look for. You want to look for x-intercepts and the y-intercept. Now, the y-intercept is super easy. Remember from Algebra 2, that's just the constant. So here, since my constant is negative 6, I know that this graph crosses the y-axis at 0, negative 6. Done y-intercept. But what about the x-intercepts? Well, to get the x-intercepts, I have to set this equation equal to 0. So replace y, f of x, with 0 equals x squared minus 5x minus 6, and solve that. Factoring gives me 0 equals x minus 6 times x plus 1. Set each of those equal to 0. I get x minus 6 equals 0, or x plus 1 equals 0, gives me x equals 6, or x equals negative 1. So what are those? Those are the x-intercepts. I now know that this graph crosses the x-axis at positive 6, and I know that this graph crosses the x-axis at negative 1. And so now I can do a little connect the dots. Remember, I already knew as I go to the right, this graph goes up and up. And then I go to the left, this graph goes up and up. And all that leaves me with is figuring out this point right here, the vertex. Now, in Algebra 2, you studied completing the square in order to turn this into a perfect square problem. And that's the quick, easy way to find the vertex. We're going to do that right now. So let's see here. If I wanted to make this a perfect square, then I would need half of negative 5 squared to be this number. Half of negative 5 is negative 5 over 2. Square it. I want this number to be positive 25 over 4. Now, negative 6 is negative 24 over 4. So if I'm going to turn that into 25 over 4, I have to add 49 over 4 to both sides. So now I have y plus 49 over 4 equals x squared minus 5x plus 25 over 4. So I have y plus 49 over 4 equals x minus 5 over 2 squared. Bring the 49 over 4 over, I get y equals 
x minus 5 over 2 squared minus 49 over 4. Yes, I know they're fractions. They're very scary, they're fractions, but it's okay. They're just numbers. They're just following the same rules as any. And so using this, I now know that that vertex right there is located at 5 over 2, comma, negative 49 over 4. That's the location of that vertex. Now, what if this thing is a bigger power than second power and you want to find the vertex? Well, we're not going to spend a lot of time on that in this class, but in calculus, you'll learn some tricks to finding the location of a vertex at anything of any power. But right now, second power, we're just going to use a technique from Algebra 2, completing the square to put this into vertex form, because then we can pluck that right out. So, left end behavior heading toward positive infinity, graph heading upward. Right end behavior heading toward positive infinity, graphs heading upward. Uh, y intercept at negative 6, x intercepts at negative 1 and 6, and we found the vertex by completing the square. We now have a complete picture of this polynomial. That's fun. Let's do another one. y equals negative x squared plus 3x plus 4. So first I want to know what's happening on the left and the right. So the left hand, we take the limit as x goes toward negative infinity. And again, we really only care about the highest power term, negative x squared. Let's see here. Now, Again, the 3x to the 4, they're going to fall off because they can't compete with x squared. x squared, squaring a negative makes this positive, but then I have times negative 1 right here. So I have a positive times negative 1 is negative infinity. So that's telling me as I follow this graph to the left, it is heading downward. What about over here on the right? Have the limit as x heads toward positive infinity of negative x squared. So that's a positive number squared is a positive number times a negative gives me negative infinity. And so that's telling me as I follow this graph to the right, it will keep heading downward. So I have as I head to the left, the graph goes down. As I head to the right, the graph goes down. And now we're going to go after the middle. going after the middle. Well, first we go for the y-intercept. Again, you just need the constant to find the y-intercept. The constant is 4. So, right here at y equals 4, there is our y-intercept. We know that the graph heads down on the right. We know that the graph heads down on the left. So what do we need now? We need to look for x-intercepts. So I'm going to set this equation equal to 0. 0 equals negative x squared plus 3x plus 4. Now, when your lead is negative, it's kind of a pain in the neck, makes it hard to factor, makes it hard to work with. So in this case, what I do is I multiply both sides by negative 1. So I'm going to multiply this entire side of the equation by negative 1, and to keep the balance, multiply this side of the equation by negative 1. Always multiply both sides. So I have negative 1 times 0 is 0, and then negative 1 distributes and I get positive x squared minus 3x minus 4. Ah, that's much easier to factor. So I get 0 equals x minus 4 times x plus 1. Set those equal to 0. We get x minus 4 equals 0, which gives us x equals 4. And we get x plus 1 equals 0, which gives us x equals negative 1. So we ha now have a y-intercept I'm sorry, an x-intercept at 4, and we have an x-intercept at negative 1. Again, we know that the graph goes down as we go to the left and down as we go to the right. So our graph must look something like this. And again, we have a vertex here in the middle. And if I wanted to find that vertex, I would go back and do completing the square again. But we're not going to take up our time with that right at the moment because we need to look at an example that has a higher power. 
we're going to look now at a problem that is fourth power. Actually, let's wait on the fourth power. Let's do a third power problem first. So I have y equals x cubed minus 9x squared. And I want to find a graph of that. So first of all, we're going to look at left and right behavior. On the left, I want the limit as x heads towards negative infinity. And again, you want to concentrate on just the highest power term and that's x cubed. The 9x squared can't compete with x cubed. So I have negative infinity heading toward negative infinity. Third power, so we have negative numbers to the third power. Negative to an odd power is a negative, so our limit here is negative infinity. As I follow this graph to the left, it goes down. Right end behavior. The limit as x goes toward positive infinity of x cubed. So I have positive infinity to the third power is positive infinity. So as I follow this graph to the right, this graph goes upward. So to the left goes down, to the right goes up. What's going on in the middle? Well, let's see here. So here's my x-axis and here is my y-axis and I want to find the y-intercept. Well, how do you find the y-intercept? Well, you would cover up everything with x. And what do I have left? That's right, I have nothing left. So the y-intercept must be zero. So I have a y-intercept right there at zero. Now what about x-intercepts? Well, set this equal to zero. So I have zero equals x cubed minus 9x squared. Now remember, when you're factoring, you look for a common factor. And I notice that each of these has not just x in it, but x squared in it. So I have 0 equals x squared. Factor out. And now I'm going to divide each of these by x squared, because factoring is division. x cubed divided by x squared is x. Negative 9x squared divided by x squared is negative 9. We set each of those equal to 0. So we have x squared equals 0, or in other words, x equals 0. Or we have x minus 9 equals 0, or in other words, x equals 9. So we have an intercept here at 0. We have an intercept here at 9. We need to figure out what's going on in the middle. Well, now here's where things start to get interesting. We know as we go to the left, we've got to go downward. We know as we go to the right, we've got to go upward. Also, we have a concept called multiplicity. Multiplicity tells us whether or not the graph crosses the x-axis when it touches the x-axis. Now on the previous examples, each time I had an x-intercept, we crossed right over. And that's because at those locations, we only had the number appearing once. So for instance, right here, x equals 9. That's only appearing once. But over here, x equals 0 is appearing twice. Mr. Nunn, what do you mean by it's appearing twice? Well, right there, second power. So this is not just x equals 0 once. This is x equals 0 twice. What's the difference between these? Well, here, this multiplicity is 1 because x equals 9 is only appearing once. That means that the graph is going to cross the x-axis. So right here at 9, remember I know as I go to the right I have to go up. So if I come backward, I can kind of see that I've got to go like so. It's got to cut across like that. Now what about here? Well, this multiplicity is even, second power, even. So at 0, the graph will not cross the x-axis, but it has to touch the x-axis. How can you touch but not cross? Well, you can rise up to it and just touch it and peel away, or you could come down to it and just touch it and then peel away. In this case, since we're already below the x-axis, we're going to have to rise up to the x-axis to just touch it and then peel away and start heading downward. So again, right there at 0, we have a multiplicity of 2, so it's touching the x-axis and then peeling away because that's an even multiplicity. Right here, we have an odd multiplicity, so it's crossing over the x-axis. On the left graph, as we go to the 
left has to go downward toward negative infinity because we found that in the left end behavior. As we go to the right, the graph has to head upward toward positive infinity because that was the right end behavior. So here is our complete graph. All right, last one we're going to look at. This time we're going to look at our fourth power example. x squared, uh, I'm sorry, y equals x to the fourth minus 5x squared minus 4. Now at first this can scare you, but notice that fourth power is even and that second power is even. So what we're going to do to factor this is we're just going to split it up into x squares. Now I'm going to leave that right there for a moment for you to think about. We're going to come back for it in a second, but first we're going to do the end behavior. So what's our end behavior on the left? I need the limit as x heads toward negative infinity of, I only want the biggest power term, x to the fourth. So we have a negative number to an even power gives us positive infinity. As we go to the left, this graph goes upward. Over here on the right end. limit as x heads toward positive infinity of x to the fourth. I have a positive to the fourth, gives me infinity. So as we go to the right, the graph goes up. So now we're ready to start thinking about what this graph looks like. We know as we go to the left, the graph goes up. We know as we go to the right, the graph goes up. And now we have to figure out what's going on in the middle. Okay, what's going on in the middle? Okay. First, y-intercept. Where is my y-intercept? My y-intercept, oh, pardon me, this should be, yes, this negative 4 right here should be a plus 4. Pardon me, I copied wrong. That negative 4 right there should be a plus 4. So, y-intercept. Where is the y-intercept? Well, we cover up everything that has x in it, because those all get replaced with 0. We get 4. So our y-intercept is located at 4. Okay, now, what about finding the x-intercepts? Well, again, what we're going to do is we're going to factor. So, we have x squared times x squared. How can I do that? Well, again, if you notice, this is fourth power and this is second power. You can kind of, in your mind, imagine this is second power and this is first power. In fact, there's a trick to doing that that I'll show you guys a bit later called u-substitution. But right now, just imagine that we're looking for something times something that gives me x to the fourth, it's got to be x squared times x squared. Then I need to get 4 and add up to equal negative 5x squared. And the best way to do that is do negative 1 times negative 4. Negative 1 times negative 4 gives me 4. My inner is negative 1 times x squared, negative 1x squared. My outer is negative 4 times x squared, negative 4x squared, negative 4x squared plus negative 1x squared is negative 5x squared. Checks out. Oh, now, check this out. We're not done factoring, of course, because that second power and that second power, we know that things have as many factors as they do powers. So since these are second power, they each have two factors. But these are super easy to factor because we learned those back in Algebra 1. That's different to squares. That's x minus 1 times x plus 1. And this one is x minus 2 times x plus 2. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 factors, which is good because we had fourth power, remember? Power, number of factors. Power, number of factors. Now we set each of those equal to 0. So we get x equals positive 1. We get x equals negative 1, we get x equals positive 2, we get x equals negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those points. I have at 1, at 2, at negative 1, at negative 2. Now, is the graph going to just touch or is it going to and peel away or is it going to cross at each of these points? Well, each of these factors appears only once. So each of these solutions has a multiplicity of one 
Odd multiplicity means you will cross the x-axis. So I know the graph has to pass through the y-axis at 4. I know the graph has to cross the x-axis at 1. I know the graph has to cross the x-axis at 2. And because I know the right end behavior, I know the graph has to keep heading up. I know the graph has to cross at 1, coming down from 4. I know the graph has to cross at 2, coming up from negative, from below. And then I know the graph has to keep heading up because I know the left end behavior. And there we are, folks. That is the graph of this function. How do you find this vertex right there and that vertex right there? Well, those are quite difficult to find, and we're going to need a little help from calculus to get after those. For now, don't worry too much about them. If we do need those vertices, we'll use the calculator and, and let the graphing function help us. But for now, just worry about the main shape. And you know what? That means it's time for you to try it.